found the tiniest car that I could for this week's episode. It's a chilly morning here in uh, San Juan Capistrano, California. It was freezing my butt off when I got here. And we have today this 1975 MG. Uh, the owner of this <coughs> bought this uh, recently. She used to have one many, many years ago in the same color, and it was a 1976, but she settled for the uh, 75 replacement since it was uh, in the same color. So today we're gonna do a two-step paint correction because this thing is oxidized as hell. This is gonna be a great before and after, so make sure you stay through to the, for the whole thing so you can catch this thing at the end and see how happy our customer is. MG, MGB is a sports car that was manufactured from 1962 until 1980 by the British Motor Corporation. All of the MGBs except for the V8 version. Wow, can't imagine this thing with a V8. Uh, use the BMC B-Series engine, which is a 1798cc engine and in 1975 it had uh, 85 horsepower and 100 foot-pounds of torque. That really must have been the screaming down the roads back then. Since we have this rack on the back, I'm gonna remove this today. Super simple, it's just a screw into a nut underneath. It was kind of a pain because the screws were super long and it took forever to back the nut off. Uh, but you could hand tighten them, so it was nice. Um, so I pulled this off because otherwise under the trunk just would not look right and it would be even harder to polish this thing. So. Usually I try to remove simple stuff like this uh, if it's there. Feel free to skip ahead uh, if you don't want to watch this whole sequence. If something ever seems too complex, don't bother with opening a can of worms unless you are super confident that you can get it off. You know, we leave a lot of stuff on the cars sometimes just because it's such a hassle and a risk to take it all apart. Um, but for something simple where it's just a few screws and nuts, you know, we'll tackle it. We remove wings every once in a while if they aren't like super adhesive down because uh, that can chance paint damage. So it's always good to make more space but don't do it unless you're confident you can do it and put it back together the right way. So now that that is done, we are going to hit this thing with a clay bar. Uh, it was pretty contaminated because this thing probably hasn't been detailed in forever. Uh, I used the fine grade clay bar from Shine Supply, which seemed to work just fine, and of course, uh, Shine Supply Shine Mix. forget uh, blow drying the car afterwards make sure we get all the water out of those cracks and crevices so none of it drips down today I am particularly excited about how crappy of condition this car is in because I'm gonna make a huge difference so I'm super excited to correct this thing because look at the paint now super dull haze water spots crap everywhere it's gonna look real nice when I'm done this car is single stage paint. Uh, it has a pearly paint job. It was likely repainted uh, years ago, judging by the super high readings. And I did see a burn on the fender already, so it might have happened at the body shop. So I also need to be careful on this car today. So I'm gonna hit this uh, first with Shine Supply Classic Cut. Paint is most likely pretty dehydrated, so I'm gonna use a bunch of products so we can just clean it up right away. And I am still using my new uh, Evo 21 polisher from Glossit. I have really been loving this thing. Uh, it cuts really well, it finishes out really nicely. It's a very well balanced machine, and I love the simplicity of it in comparison to certain other brands that have uh, carbon fiber and little rubber bits and stuff that just falls off very quickly, I've noticed. That I'm just going to do a test pass here to see what will finish out nicely with uh, Shine Supply Classic Polish on the orange foam pad, uh, the Lake Country HDO uh, orange cutting pad. 
feel like uh, with how much cutting I'm going to do on this car that uh, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive so I'm going to finish out nicely. So after finishing it out, it still looks uh, all hazy like this. You can see the color difference, the amount of gloss, uh, minimal swirls, but there's this strange haze. And we'll talk more about this haze uh, later on in this video because it becomes a problem for me. Thought maybe at first I didn't finish it out the right way or I needed more finishing, so I went over it again, uh, but much to my dismay, it was still all hazy and crappy looking. Here's before and after up close, so nice clean, kind of glossy, but what is all this haze? And then we come over here and it looks like absolute crap. So we did make a huge improvement, but we gotta figure out what this stuff is. Much like a Porsche and many other cars of this generation, uh, you've got this groove between the fender headlight and the hood. Now you're not going to be able to hit that very well with the hood down and you might risk burning edges or doing damage. So anytime you get a car like this, always prop up the hood uh, and then that will give you much more space to work with and you'll be able to hit that inner curve way better uh, and remove more defects. There's a little preview of this tiny little motor here. Here's a before and after on the door, different panel, less hazy than other areas, at least for now. Since I removed that back piece off the trunk, I now have full access to everything and this trunk actually was very easy to polish. Uh, a lot of space to work with and I was able to get my pad right up against the edges of the MG badge so we could get rid of the haze and crappy looking stuff around there. I am absolutely destroying my microfiber pads today, so I'm trying to use some of my lesser quality ones that are on their way out, because uh, this single stage paint is coming up all over my pad. There's red dust everywhere. That's the thing I don't like about doing uh, two steps on single stage, is that all the dust from the compound turns red too, or whatever color it is, and gets everywhere. So, ruins clothes, pads, uh, if you're working on something and it gets in the interior, it can be a pain in the ass to clean. So make sure you're prepared for those uh, single stage paint jobs. Here's a before and after on the trunk. only took me about an hour and a half to compound this whole car, so we're moving on to the final polishing stage now, uh, using Time Supply Classic Polish and the Orange Lake Country uh, Cutting Pad. 
So I'm hoping that this is going to gloss it up really nice, uh, even if we do have some ugly haze that's still coming through. here even through the polish that there's still all this haze on the front of the car and we had because the whole car was hazy there are a lot of areas that look like that and, but they all seem to cut uh, pretty decently so here's where I start running into some problems uh, I went to grab my panel prep spray, the alcohol, and Fine Lab Pure Rinseless Mixture to spray on the paint to clean off everything before I coat this. And upon looking at everything after, just with the alcohol mixture, all that haze came back. Uh, there was haze that wasn't even there before, uh, still showing on the paint. So I had to repolish this entire side. Um, and then I decided to use the Shine Supply Shine Mist to prep it instead. Uh, and also, I'm not going to put Ceramic Pro Sport on this like I was originally. I'm going to do the Art to Shine Graphene Wax, uh, something a little bit more friendly to the surface since it seems to be super sensitive. I'm hoping uh, all that haze won't come back in the future. Just to kind of show you guys what things look like before I repolish the side. Uh, once we get down here on the door, like see all that haze? And then bam, look at all that. Like it was never polished. So, I'm gonna try uh, Shine Mist here and see if we have any better luck. But, oddly enough, even this product made all that haze come back. So at this point, I was just like, okay, so this is probably the best we can do here. I'm not sure what's going on, uh, and I'm just going to finish it out and give it back to the customer in the best condition that I possibly can. called a few of my friends uh, who are more experienced than me to see if they had any insight on it and all we were able to come up with is that at some point uh, maybe something was spilled on this car, a chemical or something like that, or it just sat for too long somewhere picking up uh, contaminants and chemical damage from water spots and stuff like that um, on this, you know, not that great repaint on it. So uh, that was all we were able to kind of do. But the car's still going to look really nice when we're done, uh, and I've never encountered this before on a classic car uh, at this level. So here we are, uh, done with correction, pre-graphene wax, definitely a big improvement on swirls and defects. Still got this haze, can't figure it out. It comes back on its own, even without a panel prep agent being used on it. So I'm just gonna roll with the fact that it's probably some chemical damage from early in its lifespan. I had actually managed to cut away the haze on the hood, but then it just came right back anyway. So now let's apply some graphene wax. I'm making a big mess here, I'm not wearing gloves, and applying a ton to this applicator pad because I'm gonna do the entire car with just this uh, one applicator uh, and then wipe it off afterwards. I'm giving this a nice 
thick layer of protection here with this wrapping wax. It's supposed to last about six months or so. Super shiny, and I'm hoping that its wrapping properties would keep this thing from getting any further uh, chemical damage, uh, but we'll find out. <coughs> this stuff is super easy to apply. wipes off as easily as it wipes on. Uh, right off the bat, it's not very slick like some ceramic coatings are, uh, but after it cures, this surface becomes super slick and definitely adds a ton of shine and is safe to use on most surfaces. So the MG uh, has these plastic bumpers uh, and they're pretty faded and beat up so I'm gonna use shine supply trim shine on here and see whether we can darken up the front a little bit uh, this is a great product from shine supply if for just like a quick easy trim shine on a customer's car it's very fairly priced uh, just wipe it onto an applicator I would use a good amount of product because most of these older plastics will absorb it Wipe it on, let it sit for a few minutes, and then wipe it off. It's very easy, it darkens up a lot of trim, and will really add to your detail. Now it's time to put the luggage rack back on. It went back on easily. Uh, these nuts were so small that were on the other side, you could just hold them in your finger and tighten things down all the way. I did just skip back to the beginning of this video to double check and make sure I put this on the right way because I had a sudden uh, moment of paranoia that I put it on backwards. But it looks like we did it right. trying to put the soft top uh, up all the way so that I can clean it but uh, these old soft tops are so difficult um, all these little plugs were just having so much trouble um, actually bolting on to the little nubs here and you had to like bash them in pretty much and then also later I realized that I didn't even put this up the right way because I forgot to attach the metal bar in the back at the bottom of the rear window yeah, this thing was a pain in the butt. And I also have heard with a lot of these older soft tops that sometimes uh, if it's cold, they won't close all the way uh, because you gotta warm up the leather a little bit. So to wash the soft top, I'm just going to hit it with the wet towel. This will just get rid of all the dirt that's on it, which there really isn't a whole lot. Uh, and I'm just going to go over it with a drying towel afterwards. So if you remember in some of my previous videos, we've used the uh, Pro J leather conditioner on uh, soft tops. Uh, this really will darken up the faded vinyl or leather or whatever this is, uh, and it's super easy to do. You spray it on or apply uh, with an applicator pad, whatever your preferred method is, and then wipe it off. This will darken everything up and give it that rich look and add a ton of, and make it very soft uh, to the touch. Here is the uh, little uh, four-cylinder engine in here. You can see the uh, single carburetor over there. 
just gonna wipe out the jams with some spray wax, uh, shine supply, and try to get rid of some of the dust and the other jams from correcting the car. I bet that you could change the motor on a 75 MG in a day or less because there's only like three wires for the whole thing. I love old motors, super easy to work on. Now I'm just going to wipe the glass down real quick uh, using the Shine Supply uh, Sunshine Glass Cleaner. This is, uh, I found this to be a very efficient glass cleaner in combination with a good towel. Uh, it is streak free. I'm also going to hit the bar by hand with some polish on a microfiber applicator just to make it real shiny. The wheels on this car are beyond really cleaning. The finish is terrible. I suggested to her that she bring it to us so we can refinish them or powder coat them a nicer color. So I'm just gonna do the best I can with Shine Supply Solution uh, to get these clean, get the tires clean, and then put some tire dressing on. Not a whole lot you can do sometimes on stuff like this. Just set the expectation for your customer. You remember what this car looked like in the beginning? It's almost an entirely different color now. Well, we still do have some haze in places and, you know, it could be better, but I also don't know how to get it better because of the issues with the hazing it was having. Some of the haze went away, stuff on the hood and stuff's still there, but it looks really nice and our client was very happy. Sometimes you just can't do anything about it and we just, uh, decided that this was probably some chemical damage from at some point in the car's lifetime. So, thank you for watching. We're going to fire this thing up and pull it outside. Uh, make sure you catch next week's episode also for a 1967 VW bus. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. Catch you next time.